I live in Dorset, a wonderful county with a long and rich history. And I've always been fascinated by the Dorset coast, by its industries and its people. So I'm going to tell you the story about how Victorian quarrymen on the Isle of Portland got massive blocks of stone from here, at the very top of the island, to here, down at the sea, where the ships are waiting. It's the story of the Portland Stone Railway. This is the Isle of Portland on the Dorset coast. Not quite an island, as it's connected to the mainland by the long shingle spit of Chesil Beach. The reason that it towers out of the sea is because it's made of hard stone, ancient Jurassic stone, formed in warm seas about 150 million years ago. It's a stone that architects and builders have prized for centuries and still do. Today, quarries still work on Portland, extracting stone that's sent all over the world. This is why Portland is so pitted and scarred, why the whole shape of the island has changed. This is what the quarrymen were after, the beds of hard stone that were so good for carving that architects loved. The top bed, the roach, was considered to be a bit too full of shells, but below that, the wit bed and the base bed were the very best. But before they could get to the valuable stone, they first had to remove, by hand, all of this. Right up there is ground level before quarrying started. So there's clay, there's soil, there's crumbly rock to remove, even before you get to this, what's known as cap. It's so hard that it had to be removed by explosives, but it's absolutely useless to the quarrymen. So what do you do with it? Answer. You either build huge walls like these, that look as if they've been built by giants, or you chuck it over the cliff. And we'll see the evidence of that a bit later. But once you've quarried out those great blocks of valuable stone, how do you get them from here, on the top of the island, down to the sea? That's 350 feet, about 100 metres below, where they can be loaded onto ships and taken away. It's a steep descent, whichever way you go. And before 1826, getting stone down to the sea involved lots of horses, a fair amount of what we would now see as cruelty to animals, and quite a few accidents. In 1826, the Portland Railway, sometimes known as the Merchants Railway, arrived and really allowed the industry to take off. Within 50 years, the, the tunnels and the tracks and the cuttings had become a vital part of the industry. And by 1900, six and a half miles of tracks crisscrossed the island. All this has gone now, but the clues are still here. So let's explore. You remember I mentioned about dumping all of the useless stone over the cliff? Well, this is one of the places where it happened. What I'm standing on now was built up over years and years of dumping. It even had its own little bit of railway running out of Tout Quarry. Let's follow it inland to see where it goes. Back in the quarry, the blocks of good stone started a far more gentle journey down to the sea. Now, the people who organised this journey were the quarry managers, and some of them even managed to stamp their names on the things they had built. Now, the name carved up here on this elegant arch is J.C. Leno. That's Jonathan Leno, who was the quarry manager in the 1850s and 1860s. You can see the date, 1854. And here he is again, the same Mr. Leno and another beautifully built arch. This one dated 1862. Now by this time, the quarries are starting to advance inland and this tunnel runs underneath one of the island's main roads. 
It must have been such a tight squeeze getting a wagon through here, loaded with huge stone blocks. It's no wonder that there are scrape marks on the walls. Now, this arch is quite a big clue, but there are other clues that are smaller and perhaps not so easy to spot. These stone slabs, for example, they're sleeper blocks. These are what supported the iron rails, and you can even see where the iron pins went that held the rails in place. You can even work out the gauge, that's the distance between the wheels. In this case, it's precisely four foot six inches. But in case you think that there were steam trains running along these tracks, there weren't. The wagons were still pulled by horses. You can even see where the lines branch. There's one heading off up there, and another one, the one that we're going to follow, heading off towards one of the island's biggest quarries, King Barrow. This is King Barrow Quarry. It's somewhere that really gives you an impression of the scale of the working that took place because it's a huge hole in the ground. But imagine it a hundred years ago. It would have echoed to the sound of, of cranes and hammers and drills and the shouts of the workmen. A hive of industry. It's a bit different today. It's so quiet. All you can hear is the sound of the birds. Now, King Barrow Quarry has got just one way out, and it's down here through an absolutely amazing tunnel. This is a bit different from those elegant arches that Mr Leno's built. This is architecture on a massive scale. The walls are made of huge blocks of this wonderful shelly stone, and the entire width of the tunnel is spanned by enormous lintels of the same rock. Right, a T-junction. According to this, it's not that way, so the sea's in that direction. It's amazing that all these massive walls were built by the quarrymen by hand, because there must be miles of them on the island. just spotted a gap in the side wall here and there's another wall running off in that direction so it looks like there's a side branch of the railway that's come through here. You know, I really do feel like an explorer. This arch is dated 1881. That's a few years after the ones that Mr Leno built. And it's what happens when you want to put a new road in and find that there's a very deep quarry railway cutting to cross. It's a lovely job, though. The line of the railway sweeps round the side of the hill, below the huge Victorian fortress that sits on its summit. And the railway is now a footpath, a nice walk that takes you round the corner to yet another tunnel. Well, that was a nice gentle walk, but from here on it gets a little bit steeper. Because this is the merchant's incline. The sea is in sight and the stones started off down the home straight. No horses were needed here, it was just gravity. A winding drum with a hefty cable and some very good brakes. Between 1826, when this was built, and 1926, in that century, over four million tonnes of stone went down this incline, and I'm going to follow them. It was an ingenious way of moving stone, because as a loaded wagon set off down the incline, it pulled an empty wagon up. And exactly halfway between the two points, three rails became four. It was the passing place. Somewhere around here was the foot of the incline, but it's all changed quite a lot now. 
Now this was the point where horses took over for the last stage of the journey, to the quayside. For the Portland Stone Railway, this really was the end of the line. Here on the quay, where the blocks of stone were loaded onto ships and set off on the next part of their journey, around the British Isles to build town and city halls, great dockyards and iconic buildings like the British Museum. Some of the blocks went as far afield as the United States and India, and the fallen Allied soldiers of the First World War had their graves marked with slabs of Portland stone. This wonderful stone and the humble yet ingenious railway that helped to transport it have truly left their mark on the world. Following the Stone was commissioned by Dorset Countryside on behalf of the Portland Coast and Countryside Partnership and as part of a much larger project to encourage public access and restore and preserve Lanos Tunnel, Gully and Arch in Tout Quarry. These wonderful structures contribute to our understanding of just one of the island's many fascinating landscape stories. The project was made possible by a grant from English Heritage's Aggregate Levy Sustainability Fund and the invaluable support of the island's quarry companies, landowners and community volunteers. We hope that you too will be inspired to follow the stone and explore the wonderful heritage, wildlife, fossils, sculptures and views that Portland offers today. <laughs>